Hello and good afternoon, everyone. I hope you are enjoying the session. I'm Sherita Morrison, and we are here with our Q&A with Dr. Kesslyn Braid Stennis. I'm pleased to introduce her. She has been here before, sharing a wealth of knowledge. So uh, Dr. Braid Stennis is, the, is a professor at Coppin State University. She's also the executive director for the Dorothy I. Height Center for the advancement of social justice. And she is also a speaker, doctoral coach, and author. So I'm pleased to have her here for our Q&A. And we're gonna go ahead and get started. So as we jump into this Q&A session, Dr. Stennis, I'm gonna ask you to go ahead and just give us a bit of a recap of what you discussed earlier, and then tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure, thank you, Sharita. I, I am absolutely delighted. I was saying earlier that I don't get an opportunity often to marry my world, my world as a, a social work professor and as a social justice advocate through the Dorothy Height Center, and then as an entrepreneur. So this conference is perfect for me. <laughs> it gives me the space to, to marry my worlds, and I'm thankful. In, in, the, um, in, the, in the previous session, I talked about resilience and some of the components of resilience. And I shared with the group that Dr. Anthony Hill, one of my friends and uh, classmates at Howard University, developed a training model on resilience. And I shared um, what he uh, considered four critical components to resilience, which connect to making it, making it, to make it, right? And he talked about community and how there are various um, entities um, within our ecological system that help us build community, whether it's family, friends, or faith communities, or businesses, other business partners, faith uh, churches, um, hospitals, the, the, our communities are large. And we should consider our communities as part of our support network to help us be resilient. And then he talked about self-writing. In order to self-write, you have to recognize what's wrong, right? You have to recognize okay. what's not working, and that is critical to being to being resilient. And so, um, in social work, we use language like uh, engagement, assessment, planning, and intervention, and then evaluation. So, different language, but the same process to helping to figure out what has worked and what hasn't worked and what are the strengths that i bring to this enterprise of making it happen so that it can happen um, what are the strengths that i bring to help write some of those areas that haven't worked so well so he talked about self-writing and then he talked about creativity i love being creative that is a part of who i am and for anyone who is a social worker or a business person, an entrepreneur, you have to think of outside of the box, right? You have to think about um, what are some ways that I can reach this goal that, uh, because what I've tried before hasn't worked, but what are some ways that I, I can reach this goal? And we have to be creative um, and think, think again outside of the box. So he uh, talked about creativity as a part of, of being resilient. And the last part, which I think is probably the most important is vision. Mm. If we are going to be resilient, we have to have a vision and we have to cast a vision. We have to think about where we're going. What is it that we want to do? And but even before we figure out how to get there creatively, we have to know where we're going. And so um, vision was that fourth component of, of being resilient. And then I kind of talked about um, the benefits, the benefits of, of being creative and self-writing and having a vision and community are that we have resources. And as business people, as entrepreneurs, we, we need resources, whether those are financial or mm -hmm. relationships or individual resources or even cultural resources. And we have rich cultural resources at Coppin State University. And so um, resilience connects to the benefits of having of having resources. And the last part of what I talked about was just some examples of of how I've used each of those components as an educator as the director of the Dorothy Height Center, as a leader, and as a doctoral coach um, through the PhD consultants as an entrepreneur. And those were, that's kind of what I, what I talked about in the, in the previous session. Okay.
Well, we have some really great questions prepared for you. The first is uh, from our audience. What steps can local businesses take to be more supportive in the communities we serve? Great, great question. And, and I would redirect. The first step is to ask members of the community, right? Because some, sometimes when we are an outsider to the community, we may assume that we know but we won't know unless we ask, right? We won't know about their vision. We won't know about what they've tried before. We won't know about um, uh, their self-writing. We won't know any of it unless we ask. So I think the first step is asking them, you know, what they've done. Let me back up. Actually, the first step is engaging with the community mm -hmm. right? and becoming, becoming a, in a partnership, a relationship that's built on trust and, and, and support. The second piece is once we've developed that relationship is really asking, where are you in your process? What do you need? What strengths do you have? Um, these are the strengths that I bring. And, and, and that's how I think we can, we can support one another. That's great. And, and the idea of building community by first starting relationships is vital in all aspects. Building that trust and that support is critical. So we have another question from the audience. So love the excitement in the term self-right. How important is it to one's entrepreneurship journey um, that we recognize more of this uh, self-right? And I'd almost add self-awareness. And then I'll get to the second question afterward. Yeah, I think self-writing is, is critical, but we can't, again, we can't write until we recognize one, what is not working so well, and two, what strengths do we bring to the process, right? Mm -hmm. We Everybody talks about, um, as entrepreneurs, we need a team, and we do need a team, but that team has to be built around your awareness, of, like what you just said, of what you do well, what you don't do well, what are the needs to of, of that? What are the strengths that others can bring to help us collectively get to where we want to go? So um, I, I think that it's very important, even in my own entrepreneurial journey. Um, last year, I had to do some self writing. I had to recognize that if I want to grow as a business owner, then I really am going to need some some coaching and some some support in in developing certain areas of my business and my brand, and so that that it was critical, and I have grown um, as a result of of self writing critically important. Excellent, excellent. So, what are some specific techniques that new founders or new entrepreneurs can use in the early stages of their business uh, and idea? early stages of their business and idea development. Are there any sort of specifics that uh, strategies that they can implement that help them routinely grow? That's a big question. And I, I have a lot of thoughts around, around the question. Um, in terms of specific techniques, what has helped me as a, as a business owner is putting myself on a schedule. There are 168 hours in a week and I, being the, the, the energetic, outgoing, talkative person, professor that I am, I can really not spend that 168 hours the best way that, that it could be. So one of the techniques that I have chosen to do is that every day I have one specific Task. Now I can do a lot of other things, but every day I'm on a schedule on Monday. I do this on Tuesday. I do this on Wednesday. I may or may not, depending on the flow Thursday, I, I go, I, I post a specific thing. And then on the weekends, there's something that I do. So one important technique is to schedule. Once you have the vision, you have to schedule the task in order to that are going to be required to accomplish the vision. Mm -hmm. um, let's see some sp other techniques. I talked about self writing and, and self writing is, is a technique really. Once a week, I have a meeting with someone who is much more experienced, a mentor, much more experienced than I am. And I literally, not literally, figuratively sit at his feet 
so that I can learn. I am a social worker. I, I have done a lot in my social work career, but I, I'm not an I'm not a business. Well, now I'm a business owner, but I'm not the business minded person. And so I need someone to lead and guide me. So an additional technique would be to get a mentor who has experience in, in your particular area. Um, those, those two things, along with some other techniques, learning social media and taking class and expanding, expanding my knowledge base, all of those pieces um, have helped me to grow. And they apply whether you are a faculty person, a student, uh, a business owner, the same techniques are, are beneficial. Put yourself on a mm -hmm. schedule, get a mentor, critical, and commit every day. Commit every day. So Excellent. Hopefully that was helpful. So you've dropped some nuggets on us and it, just as a quick recap, so we have relationship building, uh, trust and support, managing our time and getting uh, a mentor and all of those resources in addition to building community resources, being resilient, uh, self-corrective, creativity and vision. Um, what are some tools that you would recommend for a new business owner or a new entrepreneur to help stay on task in some of those areas or with scheduling or creating schedules? So, <laughs> I, I am learning as I grow, not learning as I go, but learning as I grow. And there are systems that do exist. I, at one point was just posting because it felt, I, I felt good today. But now I, I have, um, I think it's Facebook for business, mm -hmm. um, Instagram yes. for, for business, and they have different tools. I'm learning how to use those. Mm -hmm. I am, um, I'm partnering with other people who understand the impact and power of, of social media and a web page. I know it might sound simple, but I am now using, um, transferring over to a new system called Kajabi because it meets the needs of where I'm going. My vision for my business is expanding. And so I'm gonna, it's gonna require more than, than what I had before. Um, those are those are two systems. I actually, I can't believe I didn't say this, but in my coaching business, I use an assessment tool. An assessment tool, this particular tool helps me to understand the behaviors and cognition of, of my clients. And so I'm able, because of this tool, to provide more specialized um, individualized services along with some of the things that I do as a group. So that's exciting. Hopefully yeah. those are, those are helpful. Okay. Excellent. And so I have a question um, around, so you've had this entrepreneurial experience where you've had to have sort of like an entrepreneur hat on inside of the workplace. Um, tell me about some of the skills that you see as transferable for all of our new entrepreneurs uh, who may be watching. What are some of those skills that you learn working that you believe you can transfer outside and being able to run successfully your own business? That's a great, great question. Um, I, I am the immediate past chair of the Department of Social Work. I learned so much about the importance of relationships, the importance of affirmation, the importance of recognizing your strengths, but also the strengths of your team. I'm still learning um, the, the importance of, of leadership and decision making in an ethical way. Um, all of those have been beneficial as I've been growing and developing my business and looking for team members to come along to support the vision. I've learned about vision casting and how critically important it is for members of the community to buy into the vision. But I've also learned that developing the vision has to um, include the goals and agendas of those that you want to join you alongside alongside building if not it's going to be me working by myself yes um 
One of my, co well, actually two, two more things that easily come to mind. I, I am naturally a creative person. I, I will think of a new idea every two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs> but it, is, it is a wonderful strength. But it can be overwhelming for some folk. If my colleagues were on the call, they would they would be chuckling. Yes, it's overwhelming. <laughs> because of my makeup, um, I have to kind of slow down and, and map everything so that I don't overwhelm other folk. The vision is great, but there has to be a consistent path, path forward. And so I've learned that every good idea may not be the right idea for this moment. And so some have to be tabled. Others um, have to be reshaped and reformed. And, and that's, that's, been, that's been a learning lesson um, from my colleagues that have tra it's transferred into what I do as a business person. Is this an idea? Does it align with my vision? Um, does, it, does it align with the goals of the funders as in my role as executive director of the Dorothy Height Center? Does this vision align with the goals of those who have given grants to make sure that this happens? Um, and so being creative is a wonderful strength um, when it's when it's harnessed properly. Yes. And so I, I've forgotten that I should have written it down, but create creativity is is a wonderful blessing <laughs> if it's harnessed properly. I'll think of the other one. It'll come back. Okay, excellent. And we have we have a good amount of time to, to get to that. So I have another question from the audience that I want to share with you. Um, in our current climate, is it important to also schedule time to reset uh, so that as a business owner, you are in the right frame of mind to deal with your daily interactions actions with both staff and customers? Absolutely, 100%. In, in the Department of Social Work this year, our focus has been self-care. Um, I, I don't do it well. May I, can I just be honest? I don't do it well. But what I have done in order to keep me focused and grounded and, and centered, um, I, I try to walk every day, at least once a day. Mm -hmm. Usually it's you know in the morning before my children wake up. Sometimes, quite honestly, the walk is for exercise, physical exercise. Sometimes the walk is just for mental clarity, just to, to cleanse my, my, my mind from all the, the thoughts. Um, and so it, it is absolutely important. One of the other things that I try to do, and sometimes I don't do it well, but I have young children. Mm. And as a full-time professor and all the other things that I do, I have to remind myself that being a parent is the most important job that I have. And so I eat lunch with my children. We won't get to do it today. Lunch is at 12 for them. They're in school. <laughs> but I take I, I eat lunch with my children and they hate when I say, okay, turn off your <laughs> turn off your videos and your, it, it's time. I eat dinner with them every night. Um, so there, there are things that I have to do to recenter. And I can tell you when I don't do those things, I am not the best teacher. I was not the best chair when I was tired and burnt out. The compassion fatigue went out, you know, I, I wasn't, I, I just wasn't. Um, and my daughter, my, she's now 11, my 11 year old would say, mommy, How'd you sleep last night? That's her gentle way of saying, mommy, you need to take a nap. So you, so you, so you can be a better mommy and all these other things that you're wanting to do. Um, my older children have said, if I, I've, I said to them a few weeks ago, what can I do to be better? And they said, take time off, reset. And I said, you're exactly right. It Absolutely. is critical. If we're not healthy, and at our best, we can't perform at optimal level. And, and I think that's not a lesson that, that we are taught to embrace. I was taught to work hard. I'm a Southerner. It's, I was taught that Southern grit, you know, but I wasn't taught that it's okay mm -hmm. to, to take time out and, and to take, take care of yourself so that you can be better. But I'm trying to do better now. 
Absolutely. Absolutely. And as we started this conversation, we listed the the number of things that you did. So that self-care, that that catering to self, keeping your peace uh, from what I've seen over the last year. Lots of people are seeking ways to not only find peace, but keep it while maintaining balance with children and family. And you look well. Thank you. <laughs> you, you look well. And it sounds like you're managing all of this well. What would you what advice as you share uh, from your lens and Sharita, your can I, can I can I go back just a moment? Yeah. Yes. I would mm -hmm. be remiss if I didn't say this. Okay. I learned it and I'm learning it through trial and error. There was a time, particularly when I was in leadership in multiple places, I didn't take the time. Uh -huh. I didn't. And when COVID came and I was used to my busy lifestyle, but not used to being busy and homeschooling and making lunch, breakfast, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, you know, and, and doing the, it, it, um, and my normal coping places and spaces were no longer available. I crashed and burned mm. and, and it, and it peaked. And this is the social worker in me coming out, right? Cause sometimes my, my worlds merge, but it peaked during graduation. I love the academic um, experiences. I love convocation. I love graduation. It, it in some ways affirms the work that I do. Mm -hmm. And last year when we were not able to have a face-to-face -face graduation, I fell into a depression. I truly did. And I couldn't write as a professor. I couldn't be my energetic self. I did. I, I just, it was a difficult space. It was a difficult space. And I, I did do some self care and, and got into good therapy and started walking again. And that's when I decided, listen, your kids are going to be here. Count this as a blessing. You get to eat lunch with them every day. And so it, it was, it was not always, I was not always in a, as, as great of a space as I, as I am now, but I would be, um, I wouldn't be true to the process if I didn't share that part. So I wanted to go back and, and share that. It is critically important. No, that's excellent because in your answer or in your sharing, you actually answered uh, a few of the questions I was preparing to ask you anyway. So uh, that was excellent. So just uh, really quickly, we have about two minutes left. What I would like to do is, uh, as this question is raised, how do how do people who are interested get more involved in the Dorothy Heights organization? Awesome, wonderful. We are focused on social justice research, education, and advocacy. And feel free to email me at k braid stennis. I think it's in the bio section, but k braid stennis at coppin.edu or reach out to the social work department at Coppin and we'll get your information and, and show you how you can get involved. Okay, excellent. So we're we're down to the wire. We have about one minute and, and 20 seconds left. Give me your top three pieces of advice that you would give to any entrepreneur who's looking to transition and leave that nine to five and jump into entrepreneurship. Make your plan. Assess the need for, for whatever that creative thought is and jump. Be ready for the work, persistence, but, but jump, make your plan assess the needs, the viability, and jump. Just just do it. Just, just wow. do it. Wow. Well, thank you so much. I thank you for the wealth of knowledge that you've given us on today. We're leaving here with information on being resilient, creative, holding vision, gathering resources and building community. And, you know, I thank you for being a light and an example, not only in your work and your family and, and your vulner vulnerability shared on today. So I appreciate you for giving us this time in this Q and A and yes, ma'am, we're going to sign off. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right.